Hello guys and welcome to another edition of Merrick Connell English. Today we're going to be speaking about progress and science. This is an advanced level Escuela Oficial speaking exam. I'm going to answer the questions and you're going to see how a native speaker would answer these kinds of questions. Okay, so number one, predicting the future. How do you imagine everyday life in 2110? That's a really long way away, so it's very difficult to imagine, but I think I think at that point we will probably be flying around in flying cars. Maybe the things that we dream about now, for example, a pill, you can eat a pill and the pill contains a meal. So you have one little pill and you feel full like you've eaten a whole meal. Maybe in the future I would imagine we might be carrying around microchips in our bodies which communicate via Wi-Fi with machinery and equipment. So for example, I can check my emails in my mind and I don't have to use a keyboard and uh, look for it on an actual computer. Maybe by that time, we won't have to go to the gym because we will consume foods that eliminate fat and we will all have amazing bodies. I've heard about this concept at the moment called the Internet of Things and it's a very interesting concept. It's the idea of putting little microchips, internet communication microchips in things so that everything communicates with everything via the internet. For example, your fridge will tell you immediately if you don't have enough cucumbers for a recipe that you want to cook or your bottle of water will tell you that you need to refill it or buy more water. I don't know. Interesting concept though. Number two, genetically modified food. Okay, so we're talking about progress in science. Genetically modified food, it's not really my cup of tea. I am not really for genetically modified food. There's a company called Monsanto and they apparently own 90% of the world's soya. They were also the company responsible for creating napalm during the Vietnam War. So it's a bit ironic now that they are running the food industry. I don't think enough research has been done on genetically modified food, so it's difficult to think what the repercussions are going to be in the future. I don't like the idea of being used as a guinea pig to find out what those repercussions are going to be. I think genetically modified food has advantages at the same time because there are a lot of people around the world who don't have access to food and maybe in those situations it would be a good idea to provide genetically modified food so that everybody can eat but at the same time I don't think it's that simple because we waste so much food around the world in Spain we've got tomatina for example I don't know if those tomatoes are going off already or whether they are usable and and around the world, so much food is wasted. Governments don't seem to want to send that produce to other countries who really need it. So genetically modified food could be a good idea in theory for people who don't have food. But at the same time, before we focus on genetically modified food, we should probably focus on trying to redistribute the food that we already have and are wasting and throwing away. Number three, playing with DNA. What are the chances of parents choosing the sex, hair, eye and skin colour of their babies. Well, I think we've already seen that it's possible to clone a sheep and there's a lot of cloning discoveries happening at the moment. I think that in the future those things will probably be a possibility. Maybe now they are even a possibility. I am aware of the fact that, for example, you can eliminate certain genes. Now, I'm not a scientist so I can't tell you exactly how it works, but I know that nowadays if you have a disease or if you have some kind of condition, if you have children, you can manipulate the genes in some way where those problems are not carried on to the next generation. So your children don't inherit your conditions or your problems. I think it's going to be quite strange in the future if you have white people having black or Chinese looking babies and black people having Chinese or white looking babies. It's gonna be quite strange if we are able to manipulate skin color and eye color and hair color and things like that. Number four, cloning and its implications. Now, I think if you're preparing for this exam, I think a good thing to do is think about science fiction movies because the first thing that comes to mind is, I think, The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is a film about cloning. Obviously, 
obviously if we can clone people in the future, it's going to be quite strange because we, we will effectively be immortal. Maybe the idea could be that if you lose an arm or if you have a, a part of your body amputated, then doctors will be able to clone that part and replace your missing limb. Taking that further, in the future maybe it will be possible to clone a whole human being. So maybe as you reach the end of your life, you have a clone of yours that is going to replace you when you when you die. Moon uh, with Sam Rockwell is another good film which plays with the concept of cloning. But obviously the population growing at the rate that is growing, if we start cloning people and people can live forever, we're very rapidly going to run out of space on the planet. Number five, storing cells. Storing your baby's umbilical cord. I really don't have a lot of knowledge about this topic, but I think the idea is that if you store your baby's umbilical cord, you can take stem cells from that in the future. If your child grows up and ends up having some kind of condition or medical problem, then the stem cells can be used to maybe cure that problem or rectify it in some way. Again, I'm not an expert on this topic. I have heard that storing your baby's umbilical cord is very expensive because I think it's cryogenically frozen, which costs up upwards of a few thousand euros or pounds. So if you want to store your child's umbilical cord, you're probably going to have to pay through the nose. It's probably going to cost you an arm and a leg. Number six, space exploration. Useful or useless? I don't know. I think it's difficult to decide whether space exploration is useful. I know for a fact that if we spent probably half of the money that we spend on space exploration, we would probably be able to help a lot of people around the world. In a sense, space exploration is admitting the fact that we failed on planet earth because in my opinion there are still a lot of places that we haven't explored on planet earth i think it would be useful to try and create utopia on planet earth rather than trying to escape the planet i don't know how much money is spent on space programs but i would imagine it's in its trillions so i don't really know if it's useful in the future maybe we will be able to fly to other planets and that could be an amazing experience obviously but is it useful yeah i guess it is people travel around the planet people go on holidays it's another kind of holiday in some ways it's it's useful in, in some ways it's useless it's man's nature to want to discover new places star trek says boldly go where no man has gone before but is it really a benefit for the whole of humanity if a hundred people can go into space i know things start off on a small scale and then it filters down down to the masses and maybe in a hundred or so years people will be traveling to space the same way that we use Ryanair or EasyJet. But I, I don't know, I can't really see it. I can't really see the use of it at the moment. Number seven, the future of robotics. I think there is a, a big future in, in robotics. I think a lot of the things that we do nowadays which require manual labor will be done by robots in the future. Again, a lot of films that you can watch on this topic, iRobot with Will Smith, the recent film with Tom Cruise, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, I think robots are going to be an integral part of society in the future. I think it's Nissan or some kind of car brand have built a very revolutionary robot called Asimo. When it walks, it, it almost looks lifelike. I think there will be a lot of benefits for society with robotics and merging robotics with the human and creating cyborgs in a sense like the Terminator and things like that. So long as we don't kill ourselves in the process, I think it could be good for society. Number eight, the best and worst inventions of the 20th century. Number one would have to be the internet. I think, hands down, the internet has revolutionized the way that we communicate, the way that we process information, and it's only going to get bigger. I think with the Internet of Things concept evolving and emerging, there's no telling what we're going to be able to do in the near future. I would say the worst invention, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the car is the worst invention. Now I know this is a controversial statement to make, but I think the repercussions of the car and the monopoly that it has created has created a situation where it is probably one of the worst inventions because cars contribute to maybe the majority of the pollution on the planet and the electric car, the 
a car that runs on water, those things have been around since the 80s. And because of the monopoly that the car industry created, it has been impossible for those new revolutionary technologies to develop and emerge. So, yeah, I don't know. In some ways, obviously, the car has revolutionized the way that we live in many other ways, but it's kind of a bad invention now. Bad inventions would have to be, in my opinion, anything to do with war. So the atom bomb. Yeah, definitely one of the worst inventions in the history of humanity. Giving one person or a group of people the ability to press a button and instantly destroy a whole city is absolute madness. So I think that's without a doubt one of the worst inventions in the history of, of humanity. The machine gun, guns in general, bad, bad, bad. Uh, mobile phones, an incredible invention. Just probably 25 years ago, if you wanted to have a portable phone, you had to have a huge brick with a long cable that was connected to some kind of fixed battery or something like that. So they weren't really mobile, but the fact that we can just have this small device and communicate with people on the other side of the world, it's incredible. The MP3 player, an incredible device. 20 years ago, we, we you would have to have a huge vinyl collection and again, some people like that authenticity of having a vinyl collection and having that crackling sound when you're listening to the vinyl. And I can relate to that because I have a huge music collection, probably about 10,000 songs, and you can't remember 10,000 of anything. So although we have the ability nowadays to amass to hoard so much music. It's very difficult to remember what you have because you don't have a visual representation of it. Okay, so that's my uh, interpretation of answering an Escuela Oficial exam for the topic of progress in science. Make sure to like this video if you've got something good out of it. If you have any comments, any topics that you'd like me to cover, put your comments down below and subscribe to my channel, guys. Okay, so until the next video, good luck with your exams.